get some questions and answers. That's what Kevin Sorbo prefers. Uh, with that said, if you're not here for Kevin Sorbo, now's a good time to uh, find the room you're supposed to be in. Uh, we'll try to limit it to uh, one question a person if possible. And uh, we got till uh, yeah, about 45 minutes, give or take, to uh, make this happen. First and foremost, Wizard World has asked me to uh, remind you that there is a Wizard World app that if you have a, a droid phone or an iPhone, you can download it with a list of all of the different uh, celebrity sightings, uh, the photographs, the panels, so on and so forth. So again, if you have a smartphone, pretty much, you can download the Wizard World app. With that said, he's been called the Conqueror. He uh, he has been in Andromeda, uh, in up, rather. And uh, of course, uh, we'd love him as Hercules. He is the toughest man in the world, Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> I should just say shoot then, shouldn't I? But you know what George Carlin says? Shoot a shit with two O's. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I don't answer. swear anymore. Cover your ears. What was, that, what was that movie? Um, earmuffs. earmuffs. Yeah. What was that? Old school. Old school. Old school. That was funny. <laughs> earmuffs. That was great. I guess no. Yeah. 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 You're loud. <laughs> That's all right. I, I, I was, I was okay. I was okay. So how many, um, how many Chicago people here? I'm embarrassed, man. Only when you're not playing my Vikings. <laughs> Just so you know. How many Minnesota people are here? We got anybody from Minnesota? Don't be shy. Look at Minnesota. Minnesota, nice. Okay. Shh. We're like, we're like Canadians, you know. Yeah. <laughs> See, camera gets loud. <laughs> Don't you know? Hey, hey. Hey. Let's get this thing going, because I got I only have things to say when you ask a question. Alright, gentlemen, go ahead, please. Hi, Mr. Zorbo. Um, there's no question that you're a handsome, handsome man. Not my type, man. You're not my type. Can, uh, can you give me I'm some an actor, but I'm a flaming heterosexual. <laughs> can you give me some tips so I can take this and Sorbo up? <laughs> You know, I don't know why the story's popped in my head. As you know, I'm a bit of a golfer. I golf a lot and stuff. I was at a golf tournament. This is 1998. Still during the Hercules years, okay? And I was at the Phoenix Open. I got a little time off from New Zealand, came back. And I was sitting at the table with David Duvall. I don't know if that means, it means anything to you. At the time, the guy was number one in the world. He won the British Open and stuff. And he just won the week before. He won at, he won at, the, uh, at the Bob Hope in Las Vegas. And he, he shot 50, no, Palm Springs. He shot 59 on a Sunday. The only pro golfer that was on a Sunday. I had yogurt from me. He goes, that's a yogurt. <laughs> and I said, yes, sir, that, that's yogurt. And he says, son, you shouldn't eat nothing that can't make a turd. <laughs> I, think, I think I'll have more because I've been a turd since I was like in fourth grade. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know why I thought of that about keeping yourself in shape. But, um, you know, you know I, I got nothing to say. You got nothing. There's no <laughs> Thank you. Do you ever get offended by that? That people no. may not know your real name? No, you know what? It's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I'm grateful for that show. The show was a blast. In seven years of my life in New Zealand, it was amazing. We were a launching pad for so many other people's careers. Like, well, Lucy, I mean, Zena never would have happened without Hercules. We had young Hercules. Got canned after a year, but there was a guy that played me by the name of Ryan Gosling. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember taking him out for dinner the night he was going, he was just devastated. He was like 19 or 20 at the time. It was back in 97, 98. And I said, Ryan, you got the word about it. You're, you're a good actor. You'll do fine. <laughs> I would bump him and I go, give me one of your movies. You know? <laughs> Call him that guy a bone here, you know. No, no, I don't get offended. I mean, that stuff, people ask, what's your most famous show? I mean, what do you like the most? Of course, it's, I loved Andromeda. I had a blast to him. I'm a big Star Trek fan. So, and Gene Roddenberry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hi, I was wondering if you would be interested in this evening playing Hercules, a legendary drinking game with us? <laughs> Were you the ones who told me about this game? Yeah, yeah. I heard about it. Great game. Didn't I write something on the thing about yeah. it? I did, didn't I? I remember that. Yeah, you said the drinks are on you. I had, I had enough. I had, Bruce Campbell I went out last night. We had enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's funny because I don't remember. I'm not a big drinker, but I remember Bruce not really drinking that much when we shot Hercules because he's down there quite a bit. He was my golf buddy mm -hmm. along with Kevin Smith who played Aries who passed away. But, um, I know Kevin's a great guy. Great guy. 
he was my he was he was my buddy down there. But besides Michael, of course, and it was uh, that was a tough one for when, when that happened. But um, Bruce, he is uh, Bruce is drinking tequila now. So. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, rain check, maybe. Yeah, rain check. Okay. <laughs> uh, you were just talking about your fellow some of your fellow co-stars when you were working on Hercules. Mm -hmm. Who, um, who did you most who was enjoy working with? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are a little man cow, right? <laughs> so I did, I did a show when, uh, Thursday morning. They brought, brought me in a day early to do a bunch of publicity ahead of time for this. So I went on man cow. I've done a show many times through the years. So I, I, I think it's hilarious. And it's like Howard Stern. You go on Howard Stern, you got it. If you don't go along with it, they'll crucify it. Yeah. So you just got to go with it. They got a huge audience, you know. So I get on there, and one of the first things he asked me, I ended up being in the show for an hour and a half. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, you got a lot of hot babes on there. Did you, like, you know, a lot of them? Did you have like, And I said, only 80% of them. <laughs> He goes, now you can explain it's your wife. I said, she doesn't listen to your show. <laughs> no way. Who were you closest with and who did you most enjoy acting against? Well, Hercules obviously is Michael Hurst. I mean, the Eolus, I mean, it's, it's interesting. We both had the same passion and love for acting, but it, we were so opposite in what we want to do. I mean, to me, it's like, I'm, I came to the jock world, big football, basketball, baseball, but all sports. And, Michael was always this cerebral guy. He, was, you know, he got like four degrees in the seven years I've been shooting the show. And he also made fun of me for playing golf or playing in, you know, shooting hoops or whatever. And, um, but he, he became a very, very good friend. We still, you know, we do. He's directing a lot of Spartacus right now. We keep in touch every month. We do long emails, catch up, see what's going on. Um, Bruce obviously was hilarious to work with. You know, he'd come down there and just, he'd, he'd leave messages when he's back in the States and saying, this is your only friend from the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> <laughs> Checking up on your scrawny ass or whatever he's saying. And, um, and then on, on uh, it was Gordon Wolde, uh, who played Harper on Andromeda, who swear to God, he's, he is that, that bilateral universe of Michael Hurst. I mean, put, they got together, I think the room would implode. So they're, they're, they're so similar, even in stature, you know, it's like... <laughs> And uh, he actually had a great line in the, in the uh, pilot episode of Andromeda where I'm standing above him with this huge, you know, weapon in his face, and he, they cut to him talking to the other people. He says, "My God, this guy is huge. He's like a Greek god or something." You know? <laughs> and, they, and they kept it in there, which is, which is great. So that's the humor that I come from. And they let us ad lib a lot on, on Hercules, which was, you know, thank you, Sam Raimi, for letting us do that because I think that was part of the charm of the show. I think. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I was working with Lucy Laws. Lucy, it's funny because you know Lucy portrayed probably five different characters in the first two seasons before she even became Xena. The show was doing so well by our second season that the studio said we should kind of do a female Hercules type of show, and that's how that whole thing happened. And they had um, originally it was Vanessa Angel who was supposed to be Xena. She was booked for it and all ready to go, and there's there's kind of the mystery of things of what happened. But then then they get the part to Lucy, and I think. Personally, I think it turned out the way it should have turned out because you needed someone, no cut to, to Vanessa, but she's almost like too Raquel Welchish in a way. No, you, you needed, you needed a, a athletic tomboy type of person to play that role, and she fit the bill. A woman a bit more rugged. Well, yeah, you needed someone that was just, that was just and Lucy's just far more athletic, you know, and, and so it just it worked out. But um, she was a hoop, easy to work with on the set, and just like, I, the New Zealand crew was just in the cast, the people we worked with were just so awesome now. I mean, they all went on the win. We were like a training ground for them um, in terms of, they've never had something like that down there before. So out of a show to come in that's pumping, you know, $30 million in their economy every year, shooting 22 episodes, and to have this big hit, and they, everybody just grew with the show. And Peter Jackson used to come on the set to see what was going on. And he loved what he saw, and obviously he took most people when we finished Hercules, and they did Lord of the Rings. That's where, how they all were All were a creature. Um, well, I went to Andromeda. <laughs> so, I mean, they, they would talk about a part, but they said like six hours a day in prosthetics. I said, screw that. They can't see my face. I'm not doing it. <laughs> so, uh, they shouldn't expect you in the Hobbit. Give me the role. We'll talk. <laughs> all right, all right. So, excellent. Go ahead. You know, and then I did Hercules, and then it came on the air. Because he didn't know me beforehand. You know, he saw me there all the time. We, you know, we didn't talk. I left him alone. And then uh, I do it, and he walks up to me and goes, the Hercules is okay. <laughs> Said I did Hercules too, mine was better. <laughs> We're very good friends now, actually. 
and and he's he's here. We had, we had dinner the other day in Minneapolis just last week, right there for a charity event. So Lou's a good guy. Hi. Um, earlier today, Dean King was here, and he mentioned he beat you up for the world of Superman. First of all, do you have a response to that? And are you happy that you didn't get that role since it only lasted four seasons? Here's my response: three seasons. <laughs> between Dean and myself for that role. And um, we had uh, many readings with Terry Hatcher and all this stuff, so looking for chemistry and things. I think he, 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 he deserved to get that. He made a great Superman. Look, I, I, looked, I looked good as the Dean, as the, the, the you know, the Clark, the, yeah, Ken Clark, that's it. <laughs> and and, um, and, uh, I, and the weird thing is, the casting director, Barbara Miller, who's since passed away, she called me up after I did this, the test for the studio uh, over at Warner Brothers. Said, you got the part. I got, I just flipped out, man. I called my agent manager, we went out, just a bottle of champagne. Next morning, they go, now we're gonna go with Dean. <laughs> Welcome to the world of acting. This is what they do. You get the highest highs, the lowest lows in less than 12 hours. Three months later, I saw the audition process for Hercules and I got Hercules. His show went three years, mine went seven, became the most watched TV show in the world. <laughs> Like four guys for uh, X Files. Okay, they did. And uh, yeah, it's weird. It's, you never know, right? Wow. They, I mean, you look at Indiana Jones. Do you know who originally they offered the part to? Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck. Very good. And they wouldn't let him on his contract at Magnum to do it. Now, but it's weird, though, isn't it? It's weird how things happen because you can't think of anybody else in that role now, but Harrison Ford. Shane Oh yeah. yeah. They, yes, that's right. That's true. It's just, it's, it's. It's weird how it all works out. You gotta go, all right, whatever stars are aligning to them. Did you uh, beat out anybody of name value for Hercules? Um, you know what, I never saw who I was up against. They called me in so many times, seven times they saw me over a 20 half month period. And every time I went in there, the, the, the room got bigger with the universal exact suit staring at you. Because all if thinking about Hollywood, everything's about getting you out of the way. It's about rejection, that's what Hollywood's all about. You know, if I look like somebody's Ex-husband, she's gonna go right. Well, I don't want him. You know, it's very, it's very strange how people get picked for roles. And every time I went in, I said, "What do you guys want me to do?" You know, I mean, every time I come in, you say, "Don't, you don't change it. You don't give me different scenes to read." And oh no, we like we do, like we're doing. So the last day I'm in there, the seventh time, and there's like 30 people in this room. And it's intimidating because you walk in, it's got a white wall behind you, and they're all sitting there, and they're staring at you. And so I walked in, and it was probably about 20 men, 10 women. Most it was Sam Raimi was in there, and Rob Tappert, you know, all the exact producers. And um, all the heads of the studio there, Sid Scheinberg, this head guy of Universal Studios who decides not just television but movies. And one of the women said, very shy, she said, Well, we need to see you uh, with your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in great shape back then. So I said, Okay. So I took her off. And they were like, oh. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, I'm a lot bigger out of my clothes. <laughs> I did. I said that. And then uh, I think it was Rob Tapper said, he goes, because I got a little man cover, it's not obnoxious, but he saw the show. And he said, they said, would you be willing to shave your chest and your stomach? And I said, I'm sorry, I thought you wanted a man for this role. Okay. <laughs> so I took a chance with it, I know. <laughs> so, but I think it helped. And then I, then I got my part on um, The Commish, Michael Chiklis' series up in Vancouver. So I'm up there guest starring on it. And I get a call about five days into shooting. And uh, was my manager, and she said, you got the part. When you get back from The Commish, you are gonna, you're going to head down. You're, you're going to stay here for a couple months. They put in heavy training, uh, getting ready with, with fighting with staffs and swords and just all full on eight days, you know, eight hours a day, six days a week. I walk back on the set. I looked at Chiklis. I said, dude. Not F with me. I'm half God. 